Hello everyone. Welcome back. This is Mandy. We're going to do a most likely negative space swipe on this 12 inch MDF. I was finishing a bloom the other day and I saw this pink lady prism pour color and thought that would look cool with like rustic earth and some brown and so I thought hmm, let's give it a go. So I'm going to kind of show you my colors as I go. I put my gloves on because I'm really bad about that. And um, yeah, we may incorporate some boom gel. Um, we may not, I'm not sure. I think we probably will throw a couple down there, but I'm gonna use a red black cell activator to swipe with, which is still Atelier Interactive. And it looks like it looks brown. It doesn't look red. Um, I did, I thought about it, doing a uh, red violet cell activator in conjunction with that, but then I thought, well, that may be too much. So if anything I've learned from my last few uh, fails, it's that I need to be careful to not leave too, whoa, too much paint on trying to make sure this light is showing here, but it's not, so I almost knocked over the tripod in the process. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda tell you what we're doing as we go. So if you need a tutorial about what colors or what ingredients I use for blooms, I have a tutorial in the description box of every video. Um, obviously, things change over time, so uh, like in the video I used eggshell pillow paint and this is satin so just know that um, it's not going to be exactly what I use every single time but it is a great guide so that is there for you there is a piece of fuzz or something in this paint so I'm going to put down um, my pillow paint this is Glidden Premium in satin like I said this is using the bloom recipe so of course in the bloom recipe you're using house paint and untinted house paint. Those are unique to the Bloom recipe, generally speaking. Some people use them in other pores, but that gets a little confusing if you're new. So just to keep it simple, um, this is usually relegated to the Bloom recipe. So um, I prefer the Bloom recipe for swipes. I think you get nice um, structure and nice tight little cells. That's my preference. I also find that they are easier for me than doing a traditional swipe. So that may not be true of everyone, but I have found it to be true for me. So that's uh, just an FYI for you. Once you kind of get the knack of it, um, I don't think it's a perfect science, but it's um, a lot easier to potentially get what you're looking for um, with a bloom recipe in my opinion and maybe it's just because i've practiced things with the bloom recipe for a while and i'm a little bit rusty in other areas so we are going to use quite a few prism pour colors today from color art in case i forget to tell you there is a 20 percent off discount code in the description box below along with a link for anything color art, it's Mandy1120. Um, I also have one for pixel paint designs where I get my boom gel and my Australian Floetrol, and that's Mandy15. So don't forget to check out the description box for those discounts. All right, with that said, let's get started. I'm trying to move this ring light out of the way. It's sort of still showing, but okay, so. I'm going to put down a couple of tube paint colors on the bottom along with the boom gel, I think. So I'm going to put down Van Dyke Brown. This is from Amsterdam and I just mixed this so I may regret this a great deal because it has a bunch of bubbles in it, but I'm going to put it down kind of as a base layer. And there's so much more on this side than this side. Not that it has to be perfectly symmetrical, but 
I need to prime a couple of my wood rounds. I've been using MDF a lot lately, but I do need to prime some of my wood rounds just so that I have them ready. All right, so then this is Salmon Gum from Matisse. So I'm gonna put this one kind of over here. Oops, just wiped brown paint on that. Um, let's see. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put some Kookaburro Brown Boom Gel. Having some autofocus issues. I might really wish I had done that closer to the top. I'm gonna put it over here. It's sort of, um, this color is sort of like a little bit darker than a Nikko Azo Gold if I were to put it in like paint color terms. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of Atelier Blue Black for just for some contrast. I'm not gonna put a bunch down, but I am gonna sprinkle a little bit here and there. Because we're using mostly like pinks and corals and browns, so I thought this would be a nice contrast. All right, now I'm going to do Claret, which is a beautiful prism pour color. It's gorgeous. And I should have the new prism pour colors, hopefully Monday. I'm not sure what day this video is gonna come out. Um, so I plan to show you the, the colors. It, depending on how I release, how I uh, release the video, this actually may come out after I show you those colors. So I'm just telling you self-disclosure. Um, I hope everybody's doing great. I have some bubbles in my paint. Surprise, surprise. You're not supposed to torch these, but I'm going to torch them just very quickly, just because they're piling up with our layers. Like I said, not a great thing to do on a bloom recipe, but sometimes I'm impatient. Okay. It's not, not awesome. Okay. So next up is um, Rustic Earth from Color Art. This is a primary element, and I love this color. So I'm going to put a healthy dose of it on here. Oops. Might need to mix up some more. Look at that big bubble. Hello. I love my infinity pouring medium, but I don't know if it's the infinity or the Joe Sonia or a combination of both, but man, do I have a ton of bubbles sometimes. Okay. Next up is mahogany, which is a primary element as well. It's beautiful, deep, rich red. I love it. Okay, I keep forgetting I have other paint colors on my hands when I do that. And um, last but not least is Pink Lady. This is a prism pour color. So again, this was sort of the what led me to go down this path. So I'm gonna sprinkle it out pretty well on here. Also, we're using a brown black cell activator, so I gotta be careful to not use um, very dark colors up toward the top where you won't really be able to see any contrast with the cell activator. So, super pretty color. Um, I may have accidentally drowned out Rustic earth a little bit. 
I was torn on whether or not to incorporate a boom gel at the top. I have um, a watermelon pearl that would be kind of cool. I also have a pearlescent pink, which is a pale pink. So I'm trying to decide. I'm gonna do this again. What's crazy is it doesn't pop the big ones, it only pops the small ones. So the big ones that are like the most annoying, they're easier to pop yourself though. So I'm trying to decide, watermelon, no watermelon. I'm leaning toward just a small, these bubbles are crazy. I am gonna put a little bit of the blue at the top just for a little bit of contrast. Just like drizzled, nothing crazy. Just helps balance out the pink and brown tones a little bit. All right, give me a minute with these silly bubbles. All right, I think I am gonna put just a small dab of this watermelon boom gel down, just cause I've never used it before. And it's a pretty color. It's like a coral color. So it should play well with what we have going on here. Sometimes these are hard to squeeze. I gotta say y'all, I have a quite a thick line of paint here. Okay. All right, so here's my cell activator. Stupid bubbles. Like, leave me alone. Just stop coming to my party. Okay, so here's my cell activator. See how it's kind of a brown color? Um, I'm gonna put it on my color art swiping tool and Here's the problem. You see how I have way more uh, width than I have width on my tool. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative. You may hear my dog over here making some crazy noises. She's either snoring or grunting. I can't quite place it. I think she's snoring. My little baby girl. Okay, so I spread it around with my finger. I do leave a pretty decent amount on the tool. I find I get better cells, but you can't leave too much because then you really have to work to get them to come up. So not too thin, not too thick, because that's kind of the idea. So this is gonna be a little tricky because I have to come in from the middle. Wasn't the best swipe, but not the most terrible either. Let me get my knife clean and we'll go again. I thought about putting some solar flare gold on here because I just love it, but I didn't put it on there. Look at these stupid bubbles, you guys. Why do they hate me so much? And I keep getting a piece of fuzz on my tool so you may not be able to see what I just did, but where I just got the, the bubble out, I dragged paint into my negative space. It's okay, I can fix that, but. Oh, the struggles we go through to paint. Okay. Here we go again for the other side. It's gonna be interesting, this one, I think. My dog is still snoring. I just mixed up the cell activator yesterday. So here's one thing I'll say about cell activator while we're hanging out. A little goes a long way, except I do find you go through more doing negative space swipes where you load your palette knife like this because um, like you definitely use more for this than a bloom, probably about three times as much. So. When I mix up the heavy body paint for swipes, sometimes if, I, if it's a color I use a lot, like the blue-black, I'll do quite a bit more. I don't use 
brown black all that often, although I like it. I really loved it when I used it on the Ancient Treasure set swipe. So, ooh, this is tricky. Okay. And you wanna be really not very heavy handed. You see how I just drug that right into the pillow? It's not ideal. It's hard not to do though. My dog is snoring again, guys. All right, so I'm gonna pop some bubbles, let this develop a little bit. I want you to see it develop, so I'm not gonna pause you, but I'm just gonna talk to you. This is how these videos end up being long, by the way. It's bubbles and composition. But I try to share as much of the process with you guys because that is meaningful to me and helped me a lot as an artist when I first started. It still helps me a lot. I will still watch a long video. So that's kind of my process behind it. Sometimes I do a voiceover where I can speed it up a little bit. Man, my dog is really snoring. She hasn't been feeling well, my little baby. So she can snore as much as she wants. That's my take on that. Snore away, you know? All right, well, it's a little late to develop on this side, but I'm not too worried about it. I can get those cells to come through. The colors are fantastic together. Kind of exactly what was in my head. And I think that watermelon uh, boom gel went great with these colors. So let me pop some bubbles. Um, what I'm going to do is break the surface tension over here. by just gently blowing on it. That will, breaking the surface tension allows the cells that are developing to come through. this guys let me know what you think what do you think about our color combo I'm not a huge brown fan but I do like the earth tones together like what we're doing here so in this way I don't mind the brown and there's something about paint painting and doing art that makes you um, grow a lot in the colors that you like don't like etc I think because it really just challenges you to be creative and to think outside the box. And that pink lady, pink lady color looks really great with this cell activator, which is exactly what I was picturing in my head. And the rustic earth and the little pops of mahogany are outstanding looking. We do still have some heavy cell activator in some places. So I'm gonna pop some bubbles and then I'll unpause you. By then it should have developed. All right, as you can see, it's developing pretty nicely. When I get up here to turn the tripod back on, I notice things I don't see down here. So the part that um, I think needs maybe the most, well, not the most work, but the part that kind of bothers me is where I smeared a little bit right here. Um, we're gonna make it work, but it looks like the most, not uniform, uniform is not really the word I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's friends over here. And that's really just because when I did the palette knife, I was kind of on the outer edge there. So one of the first things I like to do is take these weird edges here. Can you even see what I'm talking about? Let me zoom you in a little bit. Whoa, too much. I'd like to take these weird edges here and clean them up a little, <clears throat> make them look like they flow. So I'm going to kind of go out to do that. A lot of that is going to spin off. So I just wipe my tool 
using the narrow side to do this. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing down here. And I have a plan. I just need to kind of see which direction I'm going to go. Well, I don't entirely have a plan. That's not perfectly true, but I do have a general idea. She's really snoring. My little girl. We have two lab mix rescues. One of them is definitely less lab than the other. And they are, they pretty much run our house. We, we just work for them, you know? Okay, so we're going this way a little bit. Kind of want to break up some of this here. Might regret what I just did here, but we'll see. This should come over here, so I'm not too worried about that. And then that should become some wispy lines. Now here, like what do we do with this is my question. So I can either wreck this or I can kind of just draw some lines in between this part. The only thing is, as that stretches out, it's going to look more, um, it's going to break the pigment apart a little bit in the paint just because it's a thin amount of paint. So I'm really tempted to just kind of, but I kind of like what we have going on here. So um, I'm not real sure I want to do that. So. Um, I don't like this. She's seriously snoring. Again, almost anything I do right here is not going to be awesome. Kind of just have to trust that it's going to be okay. I'm tempted to put some lines through here. Um, I'm just worried that it's going to really wreck the composition if I do that. The other thing I can do is bring the wrecking line this way. So we could say, oh crap, I'll just drop this in all my paint. We could say, I get this piece of fuzz. We could bring, we could come through here and then make this look intentional. That actually might be not a bad idea. Yay. I'm so torn. I just, here's the thing like, this is not a big deal right now, but as this grows, I'm just concerned about what this is going to look like. So, I don't know, let me know. Would you leave it? I mean, it's not going to matter by the time I read your comments, but it will help me know what you were, were saying to me over there. Would you leave it or would you be like, you know what, wreck it, live a little. So, so what happens when your paint stretches too much? Sometimes it, it pulls your pigment apart. And that is especially true of things that have sparkle, but it's also true of regular paint. So my concern is as these wispy places stretch out, that they're gonna look weird. So, so I can do one of two things. I can go, you know, put a little wrecking line through here, or I can go through here. I feel like the right thing to do is this very carefully sorry I'm like super concentrating that helped a little because now as it spreads out um, 
you know, maybe it just only helped in my head. I don't know, but in my head it helped. So let's give it a gentle spin, see what we're working with. And um, naturally some of the best parts are always at the edge that flies off, right? So we have plenty of pillow paint. So one of these days I'm gonna learn the balance between way too much and not enough. It's a weird cell here that while I can fix it, I think I will. It's not really anything wrong with it. It's just a weird color coming through and makes it look kind of strange. Oh my gosh. Now I have pillow paint coming through. Is it on my skewer or what? All right, it's staying just like that. Um, so you can kind of see where our composition is. It's not done. We still have to get some more paint off, but I'm getting a couple bubbles while we can. I know the bubble process is super annoying. However, if you leave them on and they dry, very often they're going to create these annoying white measles that you now have to go fill in with paint. And so it's sometimes worth the investment on this side of things to get rid of them first. Um, I just saw a really ugly one a second ago. Sometimes like superficially blowing on them actually is really helpful. I don't love this part, but I think in the grand scheme of things, if I look at it, I, I like the composition overall very well. Let's see, you probably can't see that, but that one I just popped was going to be a measle. All right, so... breaking up some of this brown a little bit. Let's see. This feels like a very harsh line. I still really don't like this part, but you guys might be like, well, it's just a different part of the composition. It's not a bad thing, not a good thing. Not anything, but maybe it's my desire for symmetry. I see it and I'm like, it's the only part like that. But not really, because this part kind of is too, right? So in my mind, um, I can't decide if I think this is the top or this is the top. I lean toward this being the top and kind of tilt it a little bit like this. I don't know what y'all think, but we still have quite a bit of paint on here. We have to spin some off, which is a bummer because I like it just like it is. I don't really want to spin any more off, but what I learned from the piece I showed you guys a while back, well, maybe the last video, when I left too much on and it dried crazy, I have learned a very valuable lesson to not leave too much paint on. Now, the benefit of this is we used a thicker cell activator. So even if we leave a little bit of paint on, it's not as, it's not as troublesome in this situation as it was in that one. I better not tilt. So I am leaning toward calling it done. It's not wiggling a lot. It doesn't seem to be ongoing drips. So what do you guys think? The other part about continuing to spin at this point is the more we stretch out our color, the more potential we have to lose some of our color saturation over that white surface. So I'm going to go over this one more time. So my cells got a little wonky over here. And I really liked what was happening here. Unfortunately, we lost some of our composition here um, with spinning so much off. So that's kind of a bummer because I really did like some of what we had in the 
little brown areas near the pillow. But again, I really still think it's very beautiful. Love the colors together. Um, but this is, you know, this is kind of the negative space swipe life. You're, um, you're seeing a pretty basic negative space swipe. I mean, I'm not even doing some really amazing stuff like you see with Nikki D or Jessica Winterstrom. So, um, but you can see that you have composition challenges, even just doing something like this. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get cleaned up. I see, a uh, maybe a globby of paint I need to try to get, and then I'll bring you down for a close up. All right, everybody. So here we are. She's growing on me, I must say. I'm sad that we lost some of the cool things down here. And up here you can see where we had a little bit too much pillow paint. The more we spun, our cells got a little wobbly. Um, not terrible, but that's why it's important to strike the balance of using enough, not too much, not too little. Anywho, let me show you our close-up here. This little cluster right here is probably my favorite part. Beautiful colors together. The more we spin, the bigger the cells get. I really like them to be kind of like this size, but again, it goes down to how much pillow paint we use. But I love the colors together. I think the idea worked. I think what we did here helps also. Um, it's not a perfect composition, but I do like it. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know you're here. And thank you again. Take care.